Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Welcome to the chaos metrics model working group. And my brain is fuzzy too. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> my my throat and my brain. <clears throat> Um, so the minutes are in the chat. If you could add yourself, that would be wonderful. Uh, I will share my screen here. Um, a couple of things I, I just want to chat about today. Um, so this is just so Yehui, you know, and, and Lucas, you know, too. Um, this is our last meeting until 2022. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we start this one up in the next week. You know, like the week we get back or the week after, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm like if it's check. If it's 10th or if it's if it's the later one. So Lucas and I'll put the blue. Hi. Hi. There you go. Yep, it looks like it'll start the uh, we'll have this meeting next on January 18th. Okay. okay. Um, we'll make sure that we'll get this in the calendar, so not a big deal there. Um, um, was there yeah. another uh, URL for that? I'm getting the um, my SharePoint error. Uh, yeah, Sean, can you? You always seem to help. Yeah, me. I've got it up. I, this is the. I thought I'd updated the meeting, but you know, I think a lot of things. Um, this is the one I have, which does look slightly different than the one Matt shared, and that's from the meeting appointment on the chaos calendar. I bet that one works. That is working. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Sean. Um, all right. So the, the first thing that I just wanted to, to kind of talk through a little bit is, um, oh, Amazon. Hi, Emma. Sorry, I'm just... How's it going? That's okay. It's good to see you. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the, the just the spreadsheet. So this kind of goes to a larger issue that we're having in the chaos project, which is just ensuring that our documentation is accessible, you know, and it kind of is consistent and makes sense for folks. And so for a lot of us on this call, I think we have the the luxury to talk through it in a meeting like this, but I think a lot of people that are new sometimes look at our documentation and it's a little bit rugged. So I've been going through, you're all familiar with the spreadsheet, right? Lucas, Yehui, John, mm -hmm. you've all seen this. So I've been working pretty hard um, to kind of update the spreadsheet across all of the metrics working group. So this is different than the metrics model working group. But I'm trying to, to, to really kind of simplify the, the, um, this thing, the spreadsheet, uh, so that it, it carries enough information that is useful, but it doesn't carry too much information. <laughs> it just absolutely like melts your brain when you see it for the first time. Um, so with respect to the metrics model working group, I've tried to kind of simplify this one a little bit. So I think the metrics model working group, um, I think we can follow a release cycle or a release cadence that's similar to the metrics. So as we have a new model that's being developed, um, we can kind of track it in this spreadsheet similarly, um, have remarks about that potential model and then also have links to the metrics model as we're working on it. Um, the process of work is that when something is in progress, so like row 12 or any of these like 17, 18, so on and so forth, 13 is a, a outlier on this one for a second, but when anything's in progress, we just work on it in a Google Doc. So the Google Doc is our work in progress um, platform. So we don't do work in progresses on GitHub or, or some other, or we could use Google Doc or we could use some other shared um, document tool. That's completely fine, like SharePoint or something else. 
Um, and only, it's only when we have put the metric or the metric model under review that we move it to GitHub. So when it's a work in progress, it's in a Google Doc. And once we've kind of finalized whatever it is, the metric or the metric model, we move it out of a Google Doc and into the GitHub repository. And it's under it's in the GitHub repository that then the community review happens. I just want to make sure we're all kind of on the same page, because as I went through all of these tabs, <laughs> we, we we weren't on the same page. <laughs> there was there was work being done all over the place. And so I've been spending time kind of organizing this. So everything that's a work in progress, well, let me go here, is a Google Doc. And anything that's been released is a GitHub, is in GitHub, or anything that's under review is in GitHub. So does anybody have questions on that? I just need to get this process kind of clear. And this is actually in the handbook. Uh, so it sounds like the item that I did as a guest should be transferred to a Google Doc. Would you agree? It's okay. I think it's okay if it's a, is it how editable or like shareable, editable, editable do you think it is? You know, as a work in progress doc. Me. Uh, for me, I think uh, I'm fine with it because I, I have a conversation with, uh, with people in in chaos China uh, community people. So uh, I will share with them uh, on the uh, bi-weekly meeting about metrics model uh, progress. And okay. of course, some of them, uh, I, I believe just a little part of them uh, cannot access to the Google Doc, but, uh, but most of them, uh, they have access uh, to, to the Google okay. Doc. And, and, and I also, a, a discuss with them that uh, if if some of them uh, cannot access it, I can I can transfer uh, those contents to from Google Doc to to the other uh, to some other tools. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so I, I'm okay with that, and Lucas, I'm okay with it. Just kind of living as a as a guest because it's not that's not in the Chaos repository, is it? Oh, that is right. Or is it just because it's living somewhere else? I just yeah. think when we when we yeah, have I, it, you see, oh, could, could you correct me? I, I think the essence of what you're going for here is that um, the repo is for work that has been kind of that's ready for GitHub and and for Git and Git type flows, and you're yep. looking for kind of shared editability through the web, uh, and it's ready to be released. It's like kind of it's out for public consumption essentially. It doesn't really hit the GitHub repo until it's ready to be consumed, whether for review by the public or to be to be published to the public. Okay. So any of these, like this is like that space, that that namespace of GitHub slash chaos slash WGDEI is kind of that's an important space that we don't we don't work in there. That's only where our things are kind of done. So, of course, so we can do, do a pull request if somebody has an issue. You know what I mean? We can change things in there, of course. But generally speaking, yeah. So do you have that item in this document? And is it ready for you to do what you do? What item? This, oh. the fixing everything? I've already fixed everything. I kind of went through and did it. Share the uh, The contributor funnel. Oh, sorry. Oh no, I don't have it in here. I did not see that. So that should be in here somewhere. I see your question. No. So does anybody else have any questions on that? I just we I think we needed to get this process squared away because I think we were we were going in a variety of different directions based on what I was seeing in the repository and on the spreadsheet. I just have a quick question that uh, do, do we have any public area on the on the website to to show this link? I mean, about this whole sheet? We don't. I don't think it's on the website. Okay. Do we need? But we need could. That? Okay. 
Yeah, I think we do need that. Every every time we show this to somebody, they like it quite a bit. And so, um, yeah, no, that's a that's a fair point. Uh, because I, I, I already add, add to my bookmark, but uh, I don't think other body know uh, where to find those metrics and ma metrics model. Okay. Um, uh, chaos. Okay. Could we put it in the community handbook somewhere where we're talking about like how we develop the metrics? Maybe we just have a link there. Yeah, yeah. that's a good place. Okay. Okay. Cool. The web. So you, the website's going to be like this. This thing was one thing to clean up. The website's going to be a whole other thing to clean up. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> correct. That's next. <laughs> we need. We just. We have. It's interesting. Like, like community growth and community like longevity. It creates this proliferation of documents, and they end up. They end up just kind of ever so slightly like splitting from uh -huh. each other. And uh -huh. over time, they need to be brought together. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So then in terms of the metrics model tab for this group, because it's different, right? This is like, this is different than the metrics. It's because the metrics models are slightly different. Yeah. So I think we can still follow the like the in progress considering all that kind of stuff, right? I think this is still a fine and all I haven't updated it so it says moved and all that kind of stuff. We have the model name, which I think is completely fine as well. Um, when it's released, I've been following a very uh, just a, a model of when it's released, it's version one. And if we modify it, it'll become version something other than one. All right. And so right now, it's, it, when anything's in progress, it's, it's not given a version, all right? And the reason we wanted to just version things, I think, is because as we do updates, we just want to be able to track that this has been updated. This is like a 1.1 of this metric. Sean had made a recommendation that we have um, potentially a, a working group home for a metrics model. It's becoming pretty common that say the risk working group would be developing a metrics model or uh, the DEI working group. Maybe we could talk about that, Elizabeth, but like the DEI working group would be developing a metrics model. We actually talked about one just a couple days ago on Monday, or a couple days ago yesterday, right? Um, so we may have a, a home for these. And the question that I would have for people is if we have a working group home, so for example, DEI event badging, we've talked about this as a metric model. Like, do we work on it here or do we work on it in the working groups or do we work on it in both places? Like, is it okay? Like, where do, where do we do this work? Uh, I think we wanna um, talk about what is the line between um, the output of a working group uh, and the metrics themselves and a model. I started to work on a DEI model, and I found that um, basically I was just restating the original web page and not really adding any value. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I share I share the same point about this because uh, I we what we want to do to 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 pick up the different metrics who have uh, logic connections from different. Uh, current text working group. So if we have to put it in one, uh, treat, treat one matrix model in one working group currently, it make me people think there's no, not so much difference between metrics and matrix model. Okay, fair. Sean, did you have a comment on this? Yeah, that's a really good point that um, it will be hard for individuals approaching the project to distinguish between the models and the metrics. I, I don't think that prevents working groups from developing metrics models and or proposing them and having this working group sort of help them refine it. Um, so should we I think keeping maybe, them separate in a separate repo probably makes the most sense from a out, if I'm an outsider coming in. I think Yahoo's point is very important. 
it makes it easy to navigate. If they're littered throughout all the working groups, it gets harder to find. Okay. Who so works all the work can be the, work never, the, the metrics models are kind of released under the metrics model repository. Right. And probably probably reviewed by this group for consistency. You know, I mean, I, I expect to pass some back and forth as we define okay. them and then provide examples of them, which Rigaba and I have one to show tonight. Great. At least okay. a decent start I, on it. Okay. Um, so maybe like home isn't the best phrase there. Really, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see what I'm trying to like, it's mm -hmm. not the home of it because the home would still be here. But yeah. And I would say that's optional. I mean, I think there'll be some models that we develop that are not sure. in a working group, especially the first okay. few. Okay. Okay. Right on. Thank you. Um, remarks. Remarks is similar to remarks we have here. So it's just kind of a, it's a note taking section, like just, just, just that. And then a link to the model. I removed the column that is the metrics that are in the metrics model. Because if you want to see that, you can click on this Google Doc. Yeah, I think that's a better approach. Yeah. Yeah. And see the metrics that are in it. When I had it in the spreadsheet, it just made this, it made the cell really, really big. Some of the metrics models have a lot of metrics and it made the yeah. spreadsheet look really ugly. So, and I was trying to make it look less ugly. So, all right. And that's it. Oh, process model. Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> so don't worry about that column. That surprised me. So does anybody think that there's anything else that we should be tracking in the spreadsheet with respect to metrics models? This is good. No, I think so. Okay. Sean, Lucas. No, I think Elizabeth. You think this great start. Thanks for doing it. Okay. You think this suits this is at least suitable? Again, I'm just trying to reduce the amount of information that's in this spreadsheet so that when people see the spreadsheet for the first time, they can understand yeah, what, yeah. what's going on here. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, so we're going to go right to Sean and Ragava's overview of the welcoming model. Yeah. That, okay, here's the question. Is that in here? Yeah, I thought I'd put it in the spreadsheet, but I don't see it there now. I didn't delete anything, I promise. Yeah, I must have maybe the welcomingness piece. I don't know, maybe I edited a copy of my, a copy I made at one point or something, but. Um, is it just, is it part of community engagement? Probably. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's just do this right now then. All right, so what's the name, what's it called? I mean, we're calling it welcoming, but um, it's Elizabeth's metric that she proposed um, in one of our prior meetings. And I was welcomingness, welcomingness or welcomingness, welcoming, whatever. It's um, the best okay. phrase I could come up with. I don't know if that's what Elizabeth intended. <laughs> I, I think that's fine. I don't. I don't really have. I don't have strong feelings about the title. So yeah. Yeah, I, I don't either. I, I couldn't come up with a really perfect ones yet. So. All right. So before we before we have your demonstration, is there a? There's uh, not a doc. doc. Well, there's. It's in our notes. And I have the metrics that Elizabeth identified in the Jupyter notebook that Ragava and I will show. Okay. So let me, I'm trying, I'm going to, so I have this. And so I'm going to make a new. Welcome. 
but it's like, <laughs> some reason I have a hard time. Yeah, it's word. not a. I don't know why. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> Is it a word? Is don't welcoming know. a word? I mean, I I can add a suffix to anything and make it a word. <laughs> <laughs> Seanness. <laughs> I will. I'm just going to, because I really want to just keep up with all of these. So bear with yep. me. Oh, that's I... totally cool. All okay. And I can update that document to include the notes from the meeting where we outlined it. Perfect. And now we have that document and you can work right in there. Yep. Okay. So do you want to, do you want to share your screen? Yeah, yeah, I think that would work. Elizabeth, you may have to. Oh, never mind. <laughs> not at the top. Oops. Hey, could you yeah. kind of give some overview again? Yeah. So, background as to minimize. What's going on here. There we go. So, these are the metrics at the top here. We, I, uh, Raghav and I have been calling it um, the welcoming metrics model or the Elizabeth model. And Elizabeth identified activity, community culture licensing stability and code related metrics and Ragava and I built a number of either leveraged assets that are in Augur uh, Ragava built a number of things related to different things and um, we have some holes which I can talk about um, a little bit for example inclusive leadership I think that's one that we're going to have to borrow from uh, the DEI working group and I don't know if we I don't, we don't have a quick way to measure that. So we'll have to figure out how do we incorporate that into a model. Um, it, it may, if a model is something that people run, it may just have to include instructions on how to Good point. deploy. Like I think, yeah, well, or is the point like some models could include Oops. like trace data stuff and others? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of them will. Many of our metrics um, include trace data. But so, like, but they might include like twenty percent that's not, and we may have to express that somehow. Right, right. And I think, as we talked okay. about, um, so these are the five headings of the metrics, and we've tried. To, this is a Jupyter notebook, so it's a little clumsy in terms of presentation. We'll tidy it up as we finish it and make it a thing. Um, though we may store it as a Jupyter notebook. Um, do you want me to just go through some of the items that we developed? Yes, please. That would be great. Thank yes. you. And just for <coughs> Emma, I don't know if you're hearing us, but basically we had spent just a few, maybe a few weeks ago or a month ago, we had spent some time in this meeting kind of just brainstorming on um, some different metrics models that people might be interested in, like how they could draw metrics together that would be meaningful in different contexts. And what Sean and Ragava have been working on is, is so we can, we can specify the metrics models and that's great. Cool, no problem. Um, so we can specify those metrics models um, like in those documents that I was showing earlier, but Sean and Ragava have actually been doing work on deploying the metrics models. So if people wanna see this data, uh, how do they go about doing that? So that's just a little bit of background. So Sean, take it away. Okay, so we have these five areas and, you know, forgive the, the bulkiness of the Jupyter Notebook, but this is the um, activity section is first and under activity is issue age. Uh, I think we need to work on this a little bit because the issue, basically how old are the issues that were opened longer ago, they're older. So it's, um, it's not a perfect visualization just yet. Um, so I'll move past it pretty quick. Uh, then we have issue response time. And so in many cases, there's an existing Augur endpoint that can deliver the data. In this case, it's a, it's kind of a, a new way of representing the data in order to make it this kind of visualization. So we'll, we'll roll it in as a new endpoint so that this big query isn't in the notebook and you don't need database access to get to it. Um, but this is issue response time. So the example project is Augur, and this just shows can that- Can you it's make great. it a little bigger at all? I can. Oh, can you... can. Well, yeah, I can make it a lot bigger too. 
Um, and we'll probably organize this by month or quarter. It's organized by month. We could probably go to quarter if we're gonna show the full length of the project. Um, that's kind of a design decision. And one of the reasons we'll make it available is a Jupyter notebook with Augur endpoints is so that people can play with it and just apply it to their own Augur instance. Um, and ultimately our goal in the coming year would be to um, uh, have, have examples from Grimoire Lab as well. And so this is issue response time. Uh, also under activity is issue time to first response. And so this is a, Rogava, correct me, this is a mean, correct? Or is this a cumulative? It's a, it's a mean. It's a mean, okay. So this is the average time to first response. Um, how long it took to close is what's on the thing. So close I don't- the issue, yep. Yep. So. Uh, we also have a first response representation a little bit. This is um, kind of duration to close a little bit. Emma, so we, Emma asked if there's a sh no a link to share, but it looks like it's not. There is link. not yet, but there will be. I, I'll make this available um, soon. <laughs> um, right now, there's not a link. Uh, and that's just because there's database credentials in it. I have to convert a few things to Augur endpoints first. So that'll happen, but you know, before we meet next for sure, I would guess in the next week, we'll get that done. Cool, thank you. Um, for community culture, um, there's code of conduct and really, is there a code of conduct or not is kind of the indicator. We weren't sure how to visually represent this, but we include a link to the code of conduct uh, where it exists. So Augur will um, gather the code of conduct and then Oops, apparently that didn't work. That's comforting. I get what you're trying to do though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that wouldn't, because it's it's literally gathered direct from the- well, It stops the yeah. code. And does it look in like all the possible places it could go or do you expect it to be in one place? Um, so GitHub has metadata around code of conduct files and it's part of how you make your project searchable. So. If you declare a code of conduct file, then it's collected as part of the metadata, which is why possibly this is wrong. Although this this link should work. I, it was little, stopping at code. If you yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. That's exactly it. Quote. Yeah. So it's just the way I'm writing the query and displaying it. No. Well. Yeah, uh, perfect. You have code code Sean, you wrote code two times. You have code, code. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Here, there we go. There, that's exact. That's what the query returns. And apparently the whole thing doesn't get transformed into the Jupyter notebook very cleanly. It leaves a piece out. Um, so if a project has one declared in the metadata, it's gathered. Are there other places we should be looking, Emma? Um, I mean, you know more about the metadata. I, I just know that sometimes it's in the dot GitHub yep. folder and sometimes it's right in the root. Mm -hmm. And then other folks will just kind of put it in uh, random places. I know sometimes I've had troubles finding it. That's why I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, if a project has declared that they have a code of conduct and GitHub kind of motivates the projects to do this, they. They tell you what you need to do to be a project that is up to community standards. And this is something that GitHub started maybe four years ago now at uh, GitHub Universe, I think in 2017. Doesn't GitHub have that page where like it, you click on it and it shows like <coughs> an uh, alert or like check boxes if you have a code of conduct and a number of things? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's exactly helpful. That's the about. same sort of thing. Okay, that's the minute, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's where the, yeah, that's the, so GitHub actually keeps that in the background and returns it via an API. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's useful. Yeah. And yeah, so that's uh, inclusive leadership. That's the one I mentioned at the outset that um, we have to decide how to handle that. Um, license coverage is one that uh, is an auger endpoint. And I just, for convenience, just copied the image on the main page that hits that endpoint instead of showing you the pure JSON because I had something. 
And licenses declared, we also have a auger endpoint that delivers a bunch of data, but we need to process it in the metric model. It, it shows up on the auger homepage, but it's not easily transferable to a notebook. So we'll just take the data and make it pretty, basically list out the different licenses that are declared on a project. Um, but one of the interesting thing about Augur, interesting things about Augur is that we actually have all of the licenses in open source software declared because part of what we do is collect data about open source software. So when the license scanner scans Augur, it, um, it comes up that we have every single open source um, license available in at least one file. Uh, I have a question, which, less, which license scanner are used by 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 Augur, it, it uh, uh, oh. implemented by Augur. It's, um, um, and... Fasolo it's Nomos, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Nomos. It's a Fasology scanner. Uh -huh. Fasology. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. Um... You're showing us your screen. I know I am, but I'm trying to find the licensing link that I have. I mean. You know, I think that um, the fact that we're having this conversation about how do you quantitatively measure uh, the metrics kind of goes to show the value of the models project, right? Like you're sitting there putting um, metrics into practice mm -hmm. um, for the sake mm -hmm. of implementing models and it's kind of helping guide us uh, for future projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And this is um, for badging. So CII best practices badging. I should really call this um, CII best practices badging status. Most projects candidly are not best practice badged. And I won't, jump to, I won't run to the top to make that markdown cell play nice, but uh, Basically, we show you that it's uh, passing status is met by this particular repo. And I was working on making a pretty green or yellow color, but I didn't get that finished. Test coverage is very challenging. There's a lot of different, it's basically language specific. So we don't have any Augur implementation of that. I don't know of any metrics toolkit that does. It's, um, it's another one that we'll have to think about. Bus factor can be calculated, but I think we want to give people parameters, which is what's specified in the, in the repo, in the um, metric definition that chaos has. What would you allow? I thought bus factor was set parameters. Isn't it the it's, number of something doing more than 50%? Yeah, but, but we do, we do allow filters and different values to be passed in. So you can evaluate bus factor and elephant factor using your own math if you want. Gotcha. OK. Um, for like computers. You would, lower, you would lower the percentage of like what your percentage contribution threshold is? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's something like a call contributor, a casual contributor, and a normal contributors to yeah. distinguish the, the, yeah. Yeah, I was even thinking a network of people who contribute the most. Um, for uh, the way we present committers kind of starts to get at that. We also have a contributors endpoint that Ragava and I thought of using. And you can see the you know different colors of people basically who've contributed to Augur over time. Aha, uh -huh. that's interesting. So these are just the top 10. If you showed everybody, it would be harder. It also gives you a sort of a glimpse at what the bus factor might be at any point in time. It's used bar chart to simulate a heat, a heat map, right? Kind of, yeah. It's, it's basically stacking amount of contribution made by each person over a period of time. Yeah. And then she, there's there's a, I guess I cut off the um, decoding because I think I'm the blue. Uh, And then um, under code for new contributors, we actually have a visualization endpoint. So because I made this big, there's, there's actually a four panel 
visualization mm -hmm. that just you can pull from Augur by specifying the repo that you're looking at. Um, and whether they contribute. So this is the first time contributors per quarter. Um, this is repeat first time contributors per quarter. This is all second time contributors per quarter. And this is, we. it should be flyby. Apparently something snuck past my goalie. It's flyby in um, the narrative description below, but it's drive by still in that title. I have to fix that. And then let's see here. Then this um, is just another. Um, Go ahead. If, it, if it's possible to get some kind of benchmark on those um, drive-by um, contributors, it would make the data um, easier to understand. I yeah. That is hard. Uh, bench by benchmark, you mean like compare it with uh, comparing other projects? Yeah. I, th I think um, so. This is this is always one of the tricks is people do need to compare projects to interpret them, and the, and I think. The point that you raise, Lucas, is a really good one. You know, do metrics models need to have some of those comparisons sort of enabled by default? You know, should we produce an example that lets you see a couple of projects side by side? Have you also thought about trends within an organization, like a GitHub organization? It's like, yes. I think that would be interesting too, uh, for a number of reasons, right? Like we should be archiving this project or, you know, this project's doing a good job as a model for others. Yeah. So organizational trends, that's a really good, that's a really good point. We do have a, lo a lot of the data can be, is organized both by GitHub org and by repo. And I went to the repo level for, so we could show all of this data for a repo, um, like a GitHub organization as well, but then I think what you're saying is you'd like to see something that maybe displays the first time contributors per quarter for every repo in a GitHub organization, right? So you can see the trend of which repos are ticking up and which repos are ticking off. Well, I hadn't thought of it at all until the previous question, <laughs> So, <laughs> right? Um, but I think that would be interesting. I think that it provides a lot of great storytelling, which is often what we're after with these metrics, right? Yes. So Regava, can you make a note about working comparisons in here? I'm putting it in the notes too, but. Oh, thank you. I, of course I can't see that. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Um, and then this is just another view of new contributors. This would just be cumulative new contributors in a month um, using the new contributors endpoint that we have that's just data. And then we have change request acceptance rates, which is also a visualization API endpoint. And uh, for the acceptance rates, I'm just gonna zoom this down a little bit just to try to make it fit. We have all the ones that are merged and not merged. So you can see in 2020, Augur merged 360 and didn't merge 78 out of 438. And then in 2021, we have 267 merged and 68 that weren't merged. And then we also look at the 20% the slowest to be merged um, that are accepted and merged and re, or slowest to be merged and rejected. So you can see in, we had 88 accepted slow ones in 2020 and 38 accepted slow ones. And so more of the slow ones get rejected in 2021 than 2020. And then this is just another take on pull request acceptance rate, which is actually wrong. <laughs> um, my endpoint is wrong. So I have a task to uh, fix that endpoint for the, just the data and a visualization that Regava put together. So yeah, that's it. Uh, We've had some comments throughout, I guess. I would just like to say thanks. To, it's hard to, to I recognize it's hard Java. to navigate right now. Um, it's really hard to show and tell with the Jupyter Notebook, but I think that's, it's the easiest way to build something. So hopefully you all found it somewhat yeah. enlightening or helpful. I found it super enlightening. Yeah. I think Thank it looks you. awesome and I want to play with it. And I want to know how to do that. I will give you <laughs> access to, 
to play with it. Um, and if, if you have some repo, like right now it depends on auger data. So, but it could easily be, um, so that if there's a different way that we want to do these, you know, I'm open to it. I'm not married to doing it with auger data. It's just what I know. Mm -hmm. Do we have any sample data to help us to quickly to set up the whole things? Uh, do we have exa an example? Yeah, I mean the the data. You mean you 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 are you are using the uh, the data from Augur? But yeah, you, there is a anyway. there is an instance set up at augur.chaos.io. Hmm. I'm working on fixing some things in the front end, so. So Sean, you, that's the that's the home for the endpoints and you can find the go ahead matt no you can finish your thought i think emma was going to say something too i saw you pulling down your microphone <laughs> that's to make sure i'm muted properly because i realize my dryer is going over there um oh i was just thinking you know yeah like how could we spin something up or fork it or because i know and it's selfish because i'm what i'd love to do is like I mean, I have my item next, but I'd love to like take a, a Microsoft project like Dapper, like D-A-P-R, I don't know which one, and, and like show it to that working group because we have like a couple Dapper folks there. And um, and then um, be able to sort of talk through how these may or may not apply to the thing, the models, I'm calling it a model, I don't know really exactly that we're building. So I think this is like, exciting and, you know, I'd love to get people contributing to it as well. And if, you know, they can see it with their, I mean, the, the, uh, the, Augur data is great, but you know, people always like when it's they can relate to something is helpful. Yeah. Okay. VS Code DAPR. Sir. I put it in the notes. Sean. Yep. Um, Sean, are you okay with me posting that link to the um, Slack uh, for the work for the metrics model group? Yes. Cool. Okay. So Sean, the one question I had. So as we Oops, all right, I'm going to share my screen. So, um, so this it, the highlighted in yellow is the work that when we were working kind of individually a, about a month ago. Yep. Um, Elizabeth, 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 I've kind of gone from this. This has been our yeah. roadmap. Yep. And um, part of the way that we've been developing the metrics models is like you can see here. This is the DEI event badging. And we have the metric, and then we kind of explain why you care about this one with respect to event badging, and then why you care about this one, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? To help people locate a little bit as to why the metric matters for this metric model. Um, and we, we don't have that for this, which is fine. I mean, because then we can start building it out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so at one point, at some point, we're going to have this, well, I mean, I can just copy and paste it now. Um, and yeah, so this all goes here. Yep, we'll put then, in a more markdown -y format, we can fix that. Yep, and then we'll have some description. I can help fill that, that in as well, because these were all based on the research that we did over, over the summer. So um, I can fill good. in the context. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Perfect context. Yes. And so when you were showing the Jupyter notebook, mm -hmm. how difficult will it be for you to to take the context that say is written here by Elizabeth and get that in the the Jupyter notebook so that when somebody is looking at yeah. that. You know, they, think, they understand why they're looking at this with respect to welcoming welcomingness. Yeah, I don't think it'll be hard. I think okay. uh, we probably would provide once the model is released uh, some kind of canonical link so that if it changes, but we'll just probably copy and paste that context into a cell okay. so that someone can see it right as they're looking at some data. Okay. Because yeah, just I, watching you go through that, I. I was just realizing that we need to keep this aligned with yours, like right. the notebook aligned with this mark, this Google Doc slash Markdown file, so that yep, 
Yeah. Because like I, one of the things we're trying to overcome with metrics models is just giving people a lot of metrics. <laughs> That's why. And so we have to give them that context. And I think this this markdown file or this Google Doc here is going to be that context document. And so just thinking about how those two link would be cool. I agree. And I like your idea of having one source of truth um, and not two. Yeah. I mean, tell we'll tell people where the source of truth is, but uh, also probably get things into the notebook. Okay. For at least initial adoption. Well, I'm wondering, you know how like when you do the um, graphics, the images, mm -hmm. and you provide the the caption i'm so, my my brain is like <laughs> yeah words are slow right now but the caption like you could put some of that in there perhaps yeah i don't know it okay could, yeah for sure okay um just the why you care kind of thing okay cool thank you sean and regava um is so what's next for for you guys on this i, I think if you know we've gotten some feedback here and we know what isn't done yet. And I think this adding context is really important. So I think between now and when we meet again, we'll have something that's publicly shared that okay. people can look at. Right and, on. You know, and for you, Emma, I think um, certainly I can, I can give you a, a, I can give you a week, we'll finish this up before the holiday, the Christian holiday that shuts us all down. So um, I'll send you a link in the next week to 10 days. A link with? With the Jupyter Notebook that you can run against Dapper. That would be amazing. Let me know if I can help too. Like, you know, if you want, if it would be faster for you to like work together with me online or if I can, I don't know, just yeah. so it's not I mean, all on you. I mean, I think, I think the, the like I'm going to use Augur because that's what I know. I'm just going to gather the data for Dapper. Mm -hmm. and, and create some comparisons and i'd be happy to work with you on that yeah um, whatever i can do to, to i help think if there's thing. like we talked about comparisons a little bit tonight so if there's mm -hmm. a project that the dapper folks put themselves in context with that would be good to know yeah i'll try and actually now you mentioned like that was off the top of my head um yeah. i'll maybe just try and send you something tomorrow okay I mean, do you have the main repo yep Yep, yeah, I around comparison. Okay, yeah, I get. I see what you're, you're saying. I'll get back to you tomorrow. My brain is also. Yeah. Who, who <laughs> and there's they, so well, much distraction. Kind of a, who they think their competition is. Okay. Usually. So. Yep. The we have just a few minutes, um, and three items. But I'm guessing Emma put this one here. I just wanted to mostly talk through my newbieism around how to, to what I'm doing now and how to connect it with this work because okay. that's. Right. Um, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so right now, sorry, I have to open something for myself to look at while I'm talking. So as you know, like inside of Microsoft and everywhere, I guess people are, you know, asking about metrics and how do I tell my community is, uh, or my project is this, that, and the other thing. Right. And so I got a bunch of folks together from, uh, the teams were Dapper, Babylon JS, .NET, a bunch from .NET, um, and then some researchers and uh, someone who's in charge of GitHub sponsors, just to say like, what, what do we as a group can commit to work on? And um, so I had everyone kind of list the things they're interested in, why? And then I synthesized that into two groupings, which I'm calling uh maybe it'll actually be better do you mind if i just quickly share my screen because then you can, no you don't have to it. watch me talk through what i'm looking at you can just yeah. read it <laughs> hold on a second which screen is it hold on a second sorry no i've also moved all my monitors around recently so i'm just like oh that's over there now hold on Can we record this too, Emma? Is that okay? This is oh yeah, it's totally fine. The only reason I can't drop in is because it's an internal wiki, not because there's anything like classified okay. or whatever the word is. Sure. Um, I'm still figuring out how to work within the confines of like, you know, you know, 
psychological safety or whatever you call it and um, just sharing stuff. So can you see this wiki yes. thing here? Right, so um, kind of jumping to the end thing here is like there's these two areas that are really clear and strong. Like people want to know the very basics. And I think Sean, like, you know, and, and I, these are the initial ones that kind of came out that was like discovery, responsiveness, which, you know, like some of the stuff you're actually talking about, um, something around contribution, you know, by type org region. These are just things that I personally made up. So I don't make, you know, maybe there's, other categories that exist, um, things like you're already talking about again, so exciting, like the code of conduct, finding it, um, and usage. So usage comes up a lot. Um, I don't know if there's anything there. And then the project sustainability is the other category. So that's um, maybe a tougher one, <laughs> but definitely like a bucket, right? Like the GitHub sponsors folks want to make sure that, you know, that we're supporting projects that are you know, um, that, that we're supporting projects uh, and helping sustain them, but that there's certain things we look out for, um, you know, that they're an inclusive project, but also, you know, we want to see if there's burnout risk somewhere. We want to send folks money there. Um, yeah, so anyways, this is, the, sure. this is just the things that I came up with. So um, what, and then I also some, um, we actually have some existing metrics around use as an example. I'm just gonna move my, hopefully the, I'm trying to be mindful of your time here. Hold on. Well, if people might need to drop off. So I, I have my own spreadsheet, which I know Matt, you'll be so excited to hear. That is um, so then I just start, all, all I did was Babylon has some, some metrics they already use, which are like under discovery usage and contribution. And um, what are those? Like how many open issues there are, how many like get depend turns up things. So I just documented what they already had. So hopefully we can either validate what you have, contribute these, what they're doing. Um, but my next step is to kind of start to fill in the blanks of, um, of these. And you know, I, what I'd love to do uh, in the, our next, when I bring everyone together again is show them some of that auger work, connect it with either, um, open source or sort of the 101 or the sustainability yeah and then uh because there's the auger work this is where my newbieism is coming on like a um but then there's also other types of metrics that are more like things we have, like evaluate yeah from a, quant a qualitative perspective and i'm and i don't that i also don't know where that fits in so i have a lot of questions but i don't want to bombard I want to figure out how to be agile here. Well, I mean, I think I think the safety things that you have there, those are potentially reflected in some of the DEI metrics that you developed with us yeah. a while ago, to, to, perhaps under a different name. Is yeah, we yeah have I think you're right. Developed. I think the challenge is going to be how, how do you scale that or how yeah, do you get the exactly. data? Because those are not. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that the for good folks, so at GitHub and at Microsoft, the GitHub or the open source for good folks, that's one of the things they're trying to evaluate both from a, a like helping identify projects that are, you know, bad, I guess, is, or those that need help. But yeah, they need to scale to do that, like going through each repo and going, oh, is there, you know, this, like it's hard. And most of those, um, I know like in the case of the psychological safety metric, it's mm -hmm. uh, mostly just surveying the community members, a lot of those. Yeah. those. So, I mean, there is a way to get, a, a, you know, to get some data around it, but it's tricky because you're relying on the communities to survey their own members. And, yeah. you know, that might not be consistent and it might not, they might not roll it out properly. Like, I don't know, it um, it's, it's, might take some work to, to make that scalable and consistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I almost wonder if there's like iteration, like an iterator, iterative approach to these. Mm -hmm. And a little bit like you would run something like Augur to identify like all of those that had a code of conduct and then, you know, like automated as much as we could and then got to the point where we started to ask questions. Yeah, I don't know what that looks like either, but. So I think you're um, breaking ground here Emma, and it's really valuable. Um, so, for example, your um, project sustainability um, list is kind of a model in itself. Uh, and, um, oh, good. Yeah, and, and maybe it would be helpful just to kind of 
um, you know, work in that with the group as a whole. So talk about the safety stuff and how do we measure burnout risk and so on. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the whole community to um, contribute to that and, and help. Okay. Yeah, and a goal just to be clear, like I want to contribute as much as we can back. If there's like auger functionality that you need engineering time on, I'd love to bring that up in the group too, Sean. You know, there's engineers in there and we want they want this. So, you know, if there's areas of work, like I'd like to bring that too. So maybe yeah. when I'm sending you my projects for comparison, you can send me the like things that would be helpful. Um, a lot of them are in our issues. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I don't know, are they responsive there? <laughs> um, the, you know, it's sometimes like I'm generally pretty responsive, but um, sometimes okay. I keep issues open until the work is done. So some issues do stay open a while. Okay. I can just point them there for now, but then also like you have a chunk of work, but yeah. Anyways, that that's great. I just wanted to let you know, that's what I'm doing and however you want to collaborate and I, however well, I can bring after, back stuff. And after the first of the year, chaos is going to start developing a kind of common software tool group, including Grimoire Lab and Augur, where we try to build up our contributor community for the software that we have as part of Chaos as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I think that would be a, a great entry point for for engineers. Although if, if they're bored over the holiday, I'm happy to help. <laughs> Matt, should I add something to your spreadsheet? Like, are these useful or these are like too specific to us or what? I've already jotted them down. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> not in the spreadsheet, but I, I'm with Lucas. These are both these are both metric models. So, and in fact, in the in the uh, notes, you have it called Open Source Project Health 101. Um, we call it uh, Preliminary Health Report. Yeah. So I, I actually put a link in there that I think these two could probably come together in some way. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, project cool. sustainability. I'm like, I'm with Lucas that those are things that we haven't brought together before, just looking at your list, but that are, those are certainly candidates for, for metrics models. So if that's yeah. what you're talking about, like getting those in the spreadsheet and starting to build those out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to work with you best and not be separate. Okay. Oh, if, if you want to put them in there, that'd be great. I think project sustainability is not one that we have in there. I think that health 101 one is is something that we could merge a little bit with some of the work we've done already. What do you call this one? Uh, we call it preliminary health report. There. All right. <laughs> I kind of like health 101, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, well, we can always change it. I, I like health 101 too. Okay, well. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, um, I'll check in again in the new year. Thanks for your time. I have to thanks. take someone to soccer thanks. here. Oh, yes. sure. No problem. Thanks, okay. everybody. It's good right, to thanks, see you. Emma. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Yahui. Thanks, Matt. Elizabeth. Bye.